Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're basically going to be doing as live a reaction as possible to the Brendan Rogers interview that he's just about to do. It is, it's now six minutes past four and there is around about 11,444 people watching the live on the Celtic YouTube channel and we're all sitting waiting patiently for the new Celtic manager Brendan Rodgers to make his first appearance as Celtic manager. We're not sure if the Celtic are actually putting this out as a delay, if they're maybe pre-recording it, or if they are actually going to do the whole live media conference live from Celtic Park. I said they probably are going to do it live, and that's probably why things are running just a little bit late. But as soon as he goes live, we will listen to Brendan Rodgers and see what he says. Some of the comments in the chat already. Um, on the Celtic channel, hurry up Brendan, another treble in the bag, says Greg, and um, ball's not even been kicked yet, and a lot of obsessed Huns are saying Stevie, uh, anyone going up to Celtic Park, a lot of people asking that, how many people are actually going up to the ground, and um, once a sell, always a sell, there's quite a lot of comments actually coming through, as you can expect, with over, there's over 11,500 there's over 11,600 now, so it keeps on going up. So come on, Brendan, get yourself on the telly, as they say. Um, Lowell, rat, rat, rat. Uh, <laughs> God bless you, Brendan. Ten in a row, question mark. Uh, St. Brendan. Uh, Brendan, here we go. Obviously, lots and lots of comments, over 11,500 people watching this live. But we'll rejoin it as soon as Brendan comes live. So after that delay, we can now watch the Celtic press conference live. Quick for questions now. Brendan, welcome back. Nice Thank you very much. You. Thank uh, you. How does it feel to be sat here a second time to be unveiled as the Celtic manager? Well, I'm very privileged and honoured to um, to be asked to come back. Uh, my whole plan was to to have a year out and uh, and reset again, but um, but once I spoke to the you know, the guys at the club. And, um, and looked a little bit more deep into you know, where the club was at. Then um, it, it was then pretty straightforward. You know, the club's in a fantastic place, um, and uh, it made me really excited to, to come back. And also, it wasn't a nostalgic move, but I had an amazing time here when I was here. But I'm here to win going forward, and uh, and I really look forward to to hopefully achieving that. When you left the club last time, you said you'd maybe taken the club as far as you could have at that moment. Mm. What has changed in the intervening period? What do you think you could do more now? Money. What made you mm. think you could do perhaps more? Yeah, listen, I think the first and foremost, your bread and butter is always Scotland. So you yep. have to ensure. This is very true, Brendan. You have dominance whilst you're here. But what I would like to think that we can do something in Europe, and that means, you know, it's, it's well documented over many years. You know, when the club hasn't qualified or gone through uh, a great record in terms of European football. So and even though that is a challenge with the resources that other clubs will have in terms of European football, it's a great challenge for us. You know, get Champions League football this season and look to, to have European football after Christmas. And, uh, and like I say, uh, that, uh, that's a great challenge for us all. And when I look at the, from within the club, Whenever I'd spoken to Michael, and uh, when, when he came out to, to present the infrastructure at the club, uh, there was a lot of things in place that we'd spoken about uh, when I was here the first time. There was a brilliant recruitment team in, in place. I look at Mark and the work that he's done since he's been here and setting up. And That's interesting. For a club like, uh, like Celtic to work in the markets that the... Uh, that they need to be working in, and you can see with the players that's been brought in through his recruitment team, and and uh, and that for me is um, is very important. And and I come to a club for one of the very few times in my career where it has uh, an upward feel to it. Yeah. So a lot of the the jobs that I've gone into, the, the clubs have maybe been suffering, or the teams have been suffering, and I've come in to um, to pick it up. Here I come in with a great foundation. On the, on the back of the great work that Andrew's done here over the last couple of years and, uh, and look to continue with that. Have you spoken to Andrew at all about the group you're inheriting and what he found here during his time? No, no. Why would he? I've exchanged messages with him. I've, I've spoken in depth to, to John Kennedy, who's obviously been a, 
a pivotal uh, person here at the club and who was and who'll be my assistant whilst I'm here. So uh, yeah, I've spoken at length. I've obviously watched Celtic as well. The football philosophy is, is not uh, too different in terms of how um, how we would work and, and how a Celtic manager is, is perceived uh, to work with his team. You know, as, as an attacking club. We have to not just win, but you have to win stylistically in a certain way, and uh, and Angie's obviously done that, and and hopefully my period before we were able to do that. So uh, so it's a continuation of that, and looking to continue to build on that. Continued dominance. That's what it is. It's just all about continued mm. dominance. Keen to have you back and remember what you did first time out. Yeah. There of course was that anger amongst some yeah. when you departed. I just wonder how difficult at the time that was to see some of the things that were said. I was going for 10 in a row and, and there was a lot of emotion around. Um, it was something that, uh, like you said, that I, I never get too emotional with words. I'm, I'm hoping that in my time here, I can uh, have that impact that I had in my first time. I think the expectations are greater. I think the pressure... Is I think what we can take from that is the fact that he is only going to be here for the three seasons. Do not expect Brendan Rodgers to leave early. That's what I'm taking from this straight away. I think he's come to an agreement with Dermot that he will be here for the three years and then he will leave after that three-year period. Doesn't matter how successful they've been or how unsuccessful I think he will stay for the full three years, which is fantastic news for us. It's greater because of what we did the first time and probably how I left. But it's... But that was what I wanted. That's why I'm here. I'm here to win, to take on that expectation and pressure because it's a club that uh, that wants to be winning. And for me, hopefully the, the, the people that I've had lots of support for, from, you know, when I left and I'm now coming back, I really thank them for that. For the people that maybe don't want me here, hopefully I can uh, prove to them uh, with the football that we play and, and the success that we can have, hopefully I can... Uh, shift their opinions and um, I certainly don't regret it but what I do regret is the hurt that it caused people and it's the very reason I'm sat here today you know, to put things right I, I understood what uh, what it meant and uh, and probably even more so when I, when I left so that was my regret that I hurt people who were Celtic supporters and and uh, it, was, it was a big part of coming back. Final question from myself, but I hand the floor over to the rest of the guys. Perhaps it's, I don't know who this goes to because it's sort of past and present. Michael <laughs> Peters, can you give us an idea of perhaps the difference in results? We want to dominate in Scotland. We want to compete in the Champions League. And, and um, we all want the same thing, which is... Because of the, the relationships that I built up here with the, with the players, with the supporters, with the board. Um, so it wasn't an easy decision of course um, but to go away and and then be able to come back again I think it despite probably what I've read at times and what I hear you know life's about relationships and I wouldn't be sat here today if I didn't have the relationship with the guys around the table that's very interesting because there's obviously been a, a lot of speculation and a, and a lot of things said about his relationship with Peter Lowell and how that maybe broke down towards the end of his first time here. But he is saying that he does have a good working relationship with everyone at the club now. And with the other members of the board, uh, it, just, it just wouldn't happen. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly ambitious, but I'm very ambitious for Celtic to be the best that we can be. I think as I come back to the landscape and understand it much better now in terms of where we function. And But my ambition is, is for Celtic to be the best. And um, and and when I left, no matter the, the criticism that I had, the, the club was always was close to me. And, um, and like I said, it's a real privilege and honour to be invited back again. To those who may have an apprehension, what would be your message to those individuals directly? Listen, hopefully in time, I can give you the feeling that I gave you when I was here the first time. Yeah, just win things. You know that. I think when you win the first game against them, that will put a lot of lot of people back at ease, and it will um, as soon as we start exerting their dominance again on, and as Brendan exerts his dominance again on Scottish football, it will be fantastic for all the supporters, and everyone will get behind him. If I get the support, uh, which has been amazing for me and the reaction since I came back then uh, then that's great for those who doubt I, I've had it all my career yeah of course I will
continue to uh, to work hard and hopefully produce a team that plays and and plays with a commitment that uh, hopefully they can enjoy and and it's just going to be something that will take time I'm sure. Over the course of a summer, what it is you need at this period, uh, and that will be a bit of strengthening. But it's also, I'm really excited to work with the players here because it's a young squad, and, uh, and there's still, you know, a lot of growth within that. So, um, but I'm really looking forward to to getting to see them over the course of pre-season. There's only a few players that were here from when I was here, uh, so it's an exciting squad, and we can add to that. That uh, it's now a really good time to do that when you're winning. And, and of course it's, it's where you can get through, you can get through into the knockout stages then of course that is uh, that's a big step for, for a Scottish team. Um, but you arrive into Europe, there, there's competitions now where you can, uh, with that little bit of luck and, uh, and the quality that you can have, it can allow you to, uh, uh, to go a long way. So, um, so it's like I've said on the channel lots of times before, it's all about maybe even getting through to the knockout stage and then having that parachute down into the Europa and then getting a run from the Europa from the, the sort of February until, you know, the later stages and maybe even getting to the final. That is something that I have spoke a lot about on this and I think that is the realistic attempt that Celtic are looking to make with the manager is even getting through to maybe the next knockout, the first knockout stage in the Champions League and then if they do get knocked out, you do have that parachute of going into the Europa. So for us, I think it's, it's getting through a qualification phase which is really, really important. And uh, like I said, you you see where that can take you. But um, but Europe is something that it's such a challenge. Uh, but uh, but for us, it's a great challenge, and that's something that we'll uh, have to embrace. How much of you uh, aggressive? And it's always a team set out to win, but always with a, a tactical discipline. So um, so that has never changed. When my teams are at their best, that's that's what they do. So uh, so for me. I'm a better manager than I sat here seven years ago when I first came and certainly uh, from when I left four years ago. The experience is good and bad, always help you. And, uh, and that was the beauty of coming back to here. It's, uh, it's an amazing club and, and I can come back with my experience and hopefully help the club keep move forward. It's under control in terms of contractually. And, but like I say, a good time always to improve is, is when you're doing well. Yes, this exactly. Is, this is a nice possibility for us to uh, to improve the squad, but it's not it's not lots of numbers. I think Ange, when he came in, he had a massive rebuilding. He did and done a brilliant job at that. And over the last couple of years, himself and the club, they've built a really really good squad. So um, so it's a case of continually developing that squad and then adding quality where we can. Guys, yeah, I've spoken a lot about Europe, but how much are you looking forward to Mr. Bread and Butter of being back in Scottish football, battling for the title? Yeah, yeah, battling with the media. That's always good. Battling with the media, that's the one thing that <laughs> Ange Poster Coglu maybe got a bit fed up with in his time. But we all know that Brendan Rodgers has his chin held high, and it's been an amazing um, interview with him coming back. I think. We can all see that he's a little bit nervous. He had the anticipation on him. He isn't is that um, excited. Well, he is excited, but I think you can actually see a bit of nervousness there in Brendan Rogers. Tell me what you're thinking about in the comments. I'm not going to cut this off and we're going to go live on the channel to see exactly what you're all thinking and saying about the brand new Celtic manager, Brendan Rogers' first first press conference.